After a Three Days Written by Rabbi Tony Angelo Taliaferro Ph.D. In the early days of his ministry, Jesus was very passionate about his assignment and why he was sent on earth. At this tender age where most kids will play around with friends, Jesus was found discussing kingdom matters with elders in the temple, and when his parents found him, he exclaimed I must start about my father's business. Went on annual trip to Jerusalem for Passover, Luke 2.41. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. 2.41. Theoretically, Jewish men were required to go to three feasts in Jerusalem each year Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles though only the Passover was strictly observed. Those at some distance, especially the poor, could not attend all the feasts. But women and sometimes children might attend. 2.1395 Passover celebrated God delivering the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt, and pilgrims to the feast would stay a minimum of two days, sometimes longer. Was left behind at 12 years of age, Luke 2 42-45. Jesus was 12 years old at this Passover, just on the brink of manhood. During a boy's 12th year he was prepared for his induction as a full member of the religious community, which took place when he was 13.1396 this year he is described in verse 43 by the Greek noun pays, boy, youth, child, a young person normally below the age of puberty 1397 next year, as a man, Jesus will be required to attend Passover, this year he is learning what is involved. That doesn't mean, however, that he had never traveled to Jerusalem for Passover with his family. The scripture just doesn't say. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast, according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. 2.42-45 Pilgrims to the feast in Jerusalem usually traveled in a group of travelers or caravan 1398, Greek Zenodia, since a person traveling by himself was in danger from bandits who could swoop down on lone travelers. The caravan was made up of many of Mary and Joseph's friends and relatives from Galilee, and they naturally supposed that Jesus was somewhere in the crowd. No doubt when they camped for the night and Jesus was nowhere to be seen, they became alarmed. By this time they were probably 20 to 25 miles north of Jerusalem. First, they searched among the campers in their company. To look for, NIV, or seeking, KJV, in verses 44 and 45 is the Greek verb anasti, to try to locate by search, look, search for someone. It is used in early papyrus documents of searching for criminals and fugitive slaves, or for a lost work of literature. 1399 When they inquired and discovered that no one had seen Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem, probably leaving early the next morning and arriving in the city about nightfall. Luke 239 When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. Jesus' family left their yearly visit they had to Jerusalem without taking notice that he was still in the city. Luke 2.43 Mary and Joseph didn't realize Jesus was still in the city until they arrived at the end of a day's journey, Luke 2.44. When they realized he was missing, it would take them another day's travel to return to the city of Jerusalem, and some time on the third day to locate Jesus. Found sitting among the teachers in the temple, Luke 2.46-47. After three days they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. 2.46-47 After three days probably means on the third day one day traveling north to Galilee by caravan, one day returning south to Jerusalem, and then the third day searching until they found Jesus. And where was he? Deeply engrossed in discussion with the learned teachers. Sometimes we hear this passage explained as if Jesus were teaching the teachers, but that misunderstands the context. The listeners would be sitting on the ground at the feet of the teachers, who were also seated. 
The rabbinical style of teaching used questions on the part of the students, from which discussion would rise. In the course of the discussion, this intense boy of twelve was both listening and asking probing, insightful questions that indicated to all his depth of understanding. Everyone who heard Jesus on this occasion was struck by his understanding. At age twelve, Jesus is listening to teaching in the temple during Passover. But twenty years or so later, he is the teacher in these same courts, and his many, many hearers are still struck with his insight and authority. Was rebuked by his mother, Luke 2:48. Jesus is so engaged when his parents finally spot him. They are beside themselves with worry, as any parents would be. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. 248. Luke describes Mary's and Joseph's reaction to finding him among the teachers in the temple as being astonished. But once Mary sees that Jesus is safe, her mother instinct takes over. She asks him why did you do this to us? She interprets the event in terms of how it has worried and inconvenienced her and Joseph. She talks about their sorrow and anxiety. However, Jesus was totally liberated from sin, Hebrews 4:15, 1 Peter 2:22, and being completely human implied developing and learning, Luke 2:40, 52. As a grown-up, he appeared to be attached to asking rhetorical questions, Matthew 21:24, Luke 18:19, yet he would likewise have suggested conversation starters to figure out information, as would any other individual, Mark 9:21. John 11:34. The inquiries of this 12-year-old obviously dazzle others, explicitly as they uncover Jesus' profundity of knowledge, Luke 2:47. There are a few lessons we can take from this story. Here are some of them. 1. Children should follow their parents to worship centers. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Luke 2:41. Christ showed us by this example that children should attend public worship. He was with his parents throughout their stay in Jerusalem for seven days, and they did not return till they had stayed all seven days of the feast. He also taught us that it is well to stay to the end of an ordinance. Two young persons should seek knowledge. They found him in some part of the temple, where the doctors of the law kept their schools, he was sitting there hearkening to their instructions, proposing questions and answering inquiries, with such wisdom, that those who heard him wondered whose son he was. As young adults, we must seek the knowledge of divine truth, attend the ministry of the gospel, and ask such questions of our elders and teachers as may tend to increase their knowledge. Jesus said, Know ye not that I ought to be in my father's house, at my father's work, I must be about my father's business. 3. We should be subjected to the guidance of our earthly parents. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them, 2 51a. Though being the only son of God, he was subject to his earthly parents. Jesus obeyed his parents and wasn't disobedient to them in any way. This scripture made us understand that Jesus grew in wisdom and favor. We must learn from him, that no matter who we are and what we possess, we must honor our parents just as the scripture commanded. Jesus submit to his parents who, though they loved him, had no real grasp of who he was and what he was called to do. Yet he did submit and obey them because that was God's plan for the present. Many of us have learned that it is difficult to submit to those who aren't as intelligent as we are, or as spiritually acute. It can be hard. It can be grating but it is also necessary at least for a time so that God can work on other things in our lives. It was necessary for Jesus at this time. The call was there, but it was not yet time to fulfill it. He must wait, learn, grow, and prepare himself for that time when he will enter into his ministry. For we should know that growth takes time. And the child grew and became strong, he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2 colon 40. Luke explained to us Jesus' gradual growth to maturity in Nazareth even though he was given birth by poor parents who could only afford a manger for him to be given birth. Jesus went through the same period of childhood and adolescence that we must. Some of the time we're in such a great deal a rush to continue ahead with life, 
that we are enticed to skip the growing up part. We are twelve going on twenty. God isn't in such a rush. He is more inspired by the course of spiritual development than simply its inevitable accomplishment. He is with you, preparing you, nurturing you, assisting you grow in Him. Jesus grew and just like most prophets, He didn't start out from infancy with all knowledge He had. As toddlers, we human learn by observing, trial and error. We learn language by imitation and correction. We learn responsibility by parental rules and enforcement until those rules and eventually, those values become internalized. 5. We must be filled with wisdom from God. And the child grew and became strong, he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2:40. Though Jesus had to learn like the rest of us, he was specially gifted by God. This verse tells us that he was filled with wisdom and that the grace of God was upon him that is, God blessed him in what he was doing. 6. Jesus had personal intimacy with God. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house, is more than a boy's somewhat naive question. This is a turning point in Jesus' life. Mary speaks about your father and I in verse 48. But in verse 49, Jesus takes the word father and applies it to the God of the temple. The personal intimacy of the phrase my father referring to God is unprecedented in Jewish literature, where it might be expressed as in heaven or our father. It is this amazing claim of intimate filial relationship to the father that gets him accused of blasphemy later in life, John 10 29 39.